In this video, we're going to be taking a look at an incline plane problem where we have a five kilogram mass sitting on a 30 degree incline. And first, we're going to solve for the acceleration as the object is sliding. And then secondly, we're going to solve for the coefficient of static friction if it was a slightly different case. So let's take a look at the first case where the object is sliding. What we're going to, we're going to want to do is find the forces acting on the object, which are the force of gravity pulling straight down the normal force pushing up perpendicular from the ramp, and then the force of friction, which the first one we're looking at is kinetic, that is opposing the slide. Now, as usual, what we're gonna do is take our FG and break it up into two components, which is the vertical or the perpendicular component, which we'll call FGY, and the horizontal component, or the parallel component, which we'll call FGX. Now, every time you break the force of gravity into its components, we have this 30 degrees that's translated from the incline up to this little triangle over here. So we can go ahead and do a little bit of trig to find the FGY and FGX components first, and then we can proceed from there. All right, so I went ahead and used a little bit of trick to find our two components. I used the sine of 30 degrees, the opposite side of the 30 degree angle is our FGX, and then our hypotenuse is the FG, which is MG, mass times 9.8. That's why I used um, five times 9.8 in my denominator, and I just cross multiplied five times 9.0 over, so it's 49 times sine of 30, gave us 24.5 newtons for the FGX. And then similarly for the um, adjacent side, we got our FGY, so we did cosine of 30 equals FGY over that 49 newtons again, five times 9.8, cross multiply that over, and then we got an FGY of 42.44 newtons. So we have the sum of the forces in the vertical direction, which is just the normal force upwards minus the FGY, and that equals zero newtons because there's no acceleration or movement in the perpendicular or vertical direction. And then we have the sum of forces in the x direction, which is the FGX that is making it go down the ramp minus the force of kinetic friction that is opposing the slide. That equals mass times acceleration. And that's where we're gonna go ahead and find our acceleration. Now, if we just add FGY to both sides, that means FN equals FGY. So we know that FN is equal to 42.44 Newtons, which is the value we got earlier right over here. Now, how is that significant? Uh, that's significant because the normal force times the coefficient of kinetic friction is gonna give us our value for friction. So we have FGX already, which is 24.5 minus 42.44 times the coefficient of kinetic friction, which is 0 0.3, and that equals M times A. So that leaves us with 11.77 Newtons on this side, equal to five times A, and then we can go ahead and divide both sides by five. And then that gives us our acceleration of 2.35 meters per second squared. So the, for the more typical situation where we have a mass sitting on an inclined plane that's sliding down, um, that is going to be your approach. You're typically going to use the Fn for your normal force, which you won't need if you're not considering friction. If you are considering friction, you need the normal force so that you can plug it in into our friction formula and subtract it from that Fgx, and then you can set that equal to your Ma, where you can eventually find your A. So let's go ahead and rework this 
and solve for our coefficient of static friction now. So that's going to look a little bit different. So let's go ahead and erase the bottom half of our work. Now how it's going to look a little bit different is we have the sum of forces in the x direction again, which is still our FGX, but minus the force of static friction. And now that's no longer equal to the five kilograms times A because we know it's zero newtons. Because if it's um, at rest, then that is when we apply static friction. So there's a couple of things we know about static friction. Um, number one, if it's a problem where you're solving for static friction, that means the object's at rest. And number two, then we know that the net force on the object for the X and Y um, formulas is zero newtons. So we know that the FGX is still 24.5. And then if we know that um, it's equal to zero, we can add the force of static friction to both sides, which is the normal force times mu sub s. And again, we know the normal force already because we know it from over here. So we can go ahead and slide that number in right over here and then divide both sides by 42.44. And that is going to give us our coefficient of static friction, which equals 0 0.58, which is a unitless number because we're taking two numbers that are forces and newtons. So those two units are going to cancel each other out. So with the coefficient of static friction, um, very likely it is going to be a number less than one. There are some rare cases where it may be more than one, but very, very likely it's going to be less than one. And also it's going to be more than the coefficient of kinetic friction of 0 0.3. So it fits both of that criteria. So that number does look good. So I hope that was helpful in helping you analyze an inclined plane problem with kinetic and static friction. Thank you for watching and listening.